Well, it's a week to go, a week and one day, if you want to be precise, before South Africans go to the poll. All indications are showing us that they are they are going to be turning out in far greater numbers than most of the pundits believe. Also, um, there could be more change than we being fed. I'm going to try and find out from Tony Leon, former uh, leader of the opposition. Uh, he left politics a while ago, but he certainly keeps his hand in. He'll be giving us some insights. Well, Tony, aren't you a little, just a little bit sorry that you aren't in the mix for these elections? I, I absolutely have no regrets. Listen, Alec, I got involved in politics a long time ago. I was uh, 29. I was elected to the Joburg City Council. I went to Parliament 32 years old. And I was there for 20 years and 13 of which I led the DP and then the DA. So, you know, I'd, I'd done what I could do with what I had from where I was to misquote President Roosevelt. So I, I don't. And uh, look, election campaigns are, are interesting and quite exhilarating, but they're deeply exhausting. And I don't know, I've been involved in dozens of them, uh, both in the front and in the back of them. And I'm happy, you know, apart from an occasional involvement to sit this one out. And it's also, you would know this, you're an analyst uh, of some acuity, that uh, sometimes the view from 30,000 feet, well, metaphorically, the helicopter view, as Thomas Friedman called it, is clearer than when you're in the weeds and, uh, you know, having to dig your way through the morass of political combat. So, yeah, I, 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 I've been on both sides of the division. And um, I'm quite enjoying the view now without having to go through all that backbreaking work. And it, look, it's very necessary work. I admire the people who do it, my successors, because you've got it. And I spoke to one of them, one of the leading lights in the DA this morning, actually. And I said, listen, just put your blinkers on and just look forward. You know, the old horse racing thing. You put horses and blinkers because they look to the side, they can lose their racing edge. And you can't, if you're at the you know height of combat a week or eight days before, start looking around and second-guessing yourself. You've just got to keep going. Yeah. Well, you have been the man in the arena, to use another politician's famous speech, Teddy Roosevelt. And you've got, you've got the bruises, you've got the, you've got the sores, but you've also got the insights. And who's been doing this well? Who's been managing their campaigns well from where you're sitting and who not so well? Well, wow, that's, uh, that's a pretty uh, good question and difficult to answer. And, and I have a little bias here because I'm uh, loyal to the party that I was the founding leader of. So maybe I don't look at the DA with as much dispassionate uh, objectivity as others would. Um, look, I, I think given the terrible uh, uh, situation they landed the country and the ANC's done quite well in this campaign, in the sense they've managed to uh, talk their way around the absolute serial failures uh, on their watch, which we don't have to go into. You chronicle them every day in biz news, and I think a lot of the people watching this know exactly what they are. Notwithstanding that they've, to an extent, although probably not wholly successfully, recast it as a referendum on the last 30 years. And, you know, by invoking 1994 rather than 2024, uh, on the positive side, and then on the negative side, you know, going around, which they don't quite do in their political party broadcast, but they do it on the ground. Uh, if you don't vote for us, you'll lose your social grant, you'll lose your pension, uh, you, they'll bring back apartheid, all those tropes. And the, the truth of the matter is, even if the ANC has had an indifferent and bad campaign, and the aspects of which are very bad, they're very few posters, they're very poor quality, um, the truth is they've got a national campaign machine that no other party can match. So when that trundles into gear, it's unmatchable at, uh, across the country, not everywhere, but generally. So given all that, they've, they've had quite a, a good campaign, I guess. And I, look, a lot of the performative headline grabbing stuff is, is, is beyond belief, this NHR farce that they uh, you know, had a public signing ceremony last week, unfunded, uncosted, untested, 
and very likely unconstitutional, but they have a signing ceremony. And then, you know, I was uh, just in a column I've written for tomorrow. I, you know, in Britain, they have the, the political concept of perda, where you may not make uh, announcements in the general election campaign, which could influence voters based on legislation that you haven't yet enacted. Well, that's exactly what the ANC goes around the country doing. And I, I think they were very vulnerable while there's load shedding, and there's a big argument now as to why we don't have load shedding or haven't had it in 50 days. But the fact that the lights have been kept on uh, is probably helpful to them. Now, whether that's uh, because ESCOM's performing better, they're burning diesel, I don't have the answer to. But it certainly helps make the case for them. So that's the, uh, that's the ANC. I, I think the worst campaign, just from where I sit, has actually been the EFF. Now, it's true they've been gazumped completely by Jacob Zuma, and it's why they are either flatlining or in KwaZulu-Natal plunging into polling oblivion, as they appear to do in the Daily Tracker poll today, anyway. And so, to some extent, they're a victim of Zuma's arrival and relative ascendancy, particularly in KZN. But they haven't really been uh, that noticeable. They haven't made the political weather. Whereas in previous campaigns, it'd be an absolute fascination on the daily sayings, goings on, uh, headline grabbing of Jacob Zuma, uh, sorry for a Freudian slip, of Julius Malema. But actually, they've almost been clipped by other actors. So on the good campaign side, I would say although he's an ethno ethnic entrepreneur, to quote von Zell Slubbert, I would think Gates and McKenzie's had quite a good campaign of the Patriotic Alliance. He certainly has filled the stadium. I mean, he got thousands, tens of thousands, into Athlone uh, two Saturdays ago. Uh, the difference between filling a stadium and producing votes on election day is, 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 is fairly significant, but he's certainly got a lot of attention. And so I would... Uh, think he's he's had a relatively good campaign and then um in terms of media attention and certainly in terms of favorable reviews by a, a very uncritical media i would think uh, rizam zansi of songezo zibis emerged as a sort of you know media darling in this campaign um and I think they've built something of a political organization. They're not just a one-man show or a sort of personality cult, which many of these other bits and pieces parties are. So I think they've actually got a bit of a political organization on the ground, and they have had a lot of attention. Now, you know, I, I do need to say that in 1994, I was the Gauteng leader of the DP, and Zach de Beer was the national leader. The Democratic Party had more newspaper endorsements than any other party in the country, and we landed up with a vast total of 1.7% of the national vote. I don't think the National Party, outside of the traditional sort of Berga and Bielt, had any sort of other media endorsements, or uh, they had a lot of negativity attached to them. They got 20% of the vote. So you've got to actually differentiate between, you know, what I always call them, not original, the chattering class is saying, and what folks on the ground are actually thinking. But I, I would say, certainly from a media profile point of view, ZB's outfit has had a good run. Now, that uh, brings me to my party, the DA. Well, I think mixed because they've been fighting the election on several fronts. And they and the ANC are the... Uh, are the prisoners of their own device. And their device is, they're not a narrowly focused party, they're not a religious party, they're a broad church party, so is the ANC. So, you know, for example, it's very easy for, if you've given up the the hunt for minority votes, or even Jewish votes, they're a minority or minority, to take a very strong anti-Israel position, this controversial war in Gaza. Um, which the ANC's done and Rasm Zansi's done. But the DA is trying to, it's got actually, you know, Jewish MPs and Muslim MPs, so, and it's trying to take a position based on public international law. So they've taken a, a, a moderate position on that. Well, that doesn't, you know, that, that, that doesn't favor, you know, one side or the other. But that's what you do if you're a broad church party. So, and the ANC, which is, uh, 
in a different way, a broad church party, can't go around making the extremist claims that Zuma does, such as, you know, we're going to tear up the Constitution. We're going to send pregnant women to Robben Island, you know, the other populist nostrums. They've been, they've pivoted towards populism, but not entirely so. So if you're a broad-based, reasonably centrist party, there are limitations to what you can do. Now, I don't know, and I genuinely don't know, whether some of the so-called controversies attaching to the DA are going to rebound to its credit or discredit on election day. There's been an enormous uh, hoopla in the media, and certainly on Twitter, X, about the so-called flag bird advert. Well, they, you know, they, they got 4 million views, so they're probably the most viewed political adverts in this whole campaign. Now, you could say, quantitatively, that's a huge success. I asked someone who does it very involved in this daily tracker poll, which I guess you've seen the France Crenier outfits and is published every day in News 24. And I asked uh, one of the, the leading lights in that polling company on Monday night, Last week, I said, well, what was the effect of that advert on popular opinion? Because they polling thousands of people. He said, nil. It didn't move the dial at all. I'm sure it enraged some people. It might have reassured others. It didn't move the dial. So, uh, you know, that's probably, you know, what's been attacked. I mean, the, the thing that the DA did in this election, which also got a huge amount of negative attention, they were quite correct. They went after other minority parties who were trying to eat their lunch in the Western Cape. Well, what would, look, the Democratic Alliance is not a civics organization. It's a political party. It, it fights for its turf. It's got to defend its real estate. What were they going to say? Of course, they were going to attack them. And I think, I don't know, that that attack on those smaller parties has been successful. If you look at the track and poll, if that poll is correct, that's all we have. It's, it daily tracks. Because it appears to be that the DA is stabilized in the Western Cape above 50%. Nationally, it actually seemed today to be doing much better. Uh, and the other parties are either going down or stagnating relative to the DA, at least in the Western Cape. So I don't know. Look, the problem is if you get involved and you have to an election campaign, there's a big difference, Alec, between what you're doing up to the 29th and what you've got to do after the 30th. So... If, as the poll suggests, never mind the national uh, outcome, that provincially, certainly two provinces, KZN and Kauteng, there won't be a majority government. It'll have to be formed by coalition. According to the polls, and once again, so caveat that, there's going to be no majority in the Northern Cape, and there's even the pros possibility of no, 50, no party crossing 50% in the Free State. So you've now got four provinces, not one. And the Western Cape, of course, is the, any set of circumstances the ANC is not going to get control of. So five provinces, potentially five, could be out of the grasp of the ANC as the inevitable government. But if you run a very hard-hitting campaign, sometimes it's more difficult for your potential coalition partners to forgive you on the 30th of May for what you said on the 29th of May. Now, I you know, all's fair in love and war and certainly in politics. So I don't know. And the DA, of course, has also got a fight of competitors, but it's a lot of its number of its competitors are also its partners in this uh, uh, multi-party charter. So, you know, it's been quite a difficult terrain, but we don't know, Alec. We'll only know we can, you know, that wonderful phrase, retrospective clairvoyance. We can all be... Uh, clairvoyance uh, on the 30th of May. Tony, I spoke this morning with Herman Mashaba from Action SA, and in 2021, he makes the point that he's coming in at the polls now around about 2 to 3%, and yet in 2021, Action SA, after just being started, came in with 2.3% of the votes and only contesting a, a small number of municipalities. He has a very different organization to the one that he had two and a half years ago. And he says, how is it possible with all the work they've done for them to be scoring so badly? So who's wrong here? Is Herman wrong? Are the pollsters wrong? Are we going to be uh, set for some more big surprises after the votes are counted? Well, look, polls are not infallible and they're just a snapshot in time. It's not an accurate prediction. But I would say about Action ESA and him that uh, 
exactly right. When he was contesting the last municipal elections in 2019, he was the new shiny bauble, you know, on the political tree. And he just stood down, been stood down as the mayor of Johannesburg. He got an enormous amount of publicity with his uh, acrimonious departure from the DA the year before. You know, he 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 almost was the flavor of the month uh, for a lot of people who felt, well, we don't like the ANC. The DA is too white or it's too negative or whatever. And let's go with this guy. And he was, as you point out, very successful then. But now there are other newer competitors, fresher competitors, shinier baubles uh, like Razum Zanzi, who who will get some of that vote, what you might call the non-ANC, but can't bring myself to vote for the DA corner of our politics. Um, and then there's Zoomers arrived. So if you want a uh, a real protest against the ANC uh, and, and you don't want to vote for a so-called white party, well, you know, you can hardly do better than vote for the MK party. So I suspect the competition for that corner of the market has intensified since I wouldn't say had it unoccupied, but he largely uh, was the novel kind of new party, which he absolutely no longer is. Now, as you say, there's some compensation because he now has built something of an organization, although I have to say how much of an organization is it? And I ask this question because if you remove Herman Mashaba from the equation, what is Action South Africa? I could tomorrow not saying it should be done, remove John Steenhuisen from the DA, and the DA will more or less continue under a new leader. So the and exactly with even more emphasis that applies to the MK party, it applies to the EFF, these almost parties that are founded uh, as an extension of the personality of the leader. So, you know, there, there are now a couple of people or different entities jostling uh, for that position. Uh, we'll have to see. I, I do not think that the polls outside of Johannesburg underestimate uh, Action SA. I think its national footprint is extremely modest. I do think it has, precisely once again, due to the Mashaba mayoralty, it has a, a, a bigger following in Johannesburg. And that might be understated in the polls, uh, but maybe not. But the problem is, you know, Joburg is is big, but South Africa is much bigger. What about Muzi Maimani, one of your successors in the Democratic Alliance? He still rates very highly on the polls of the most popular political leader. What, what, how do you think he's going to fare? Well, in, by contrast to both uh, Rise and Zanzi and indeed Action South Africa, uh, Muzi Maimani has no political organization to speak of. It is absolutely a personality-driven entity. And the reason he's popular, or maybe is popular, is because he's extremely well-known. And the reason he's extremely well-known, Alec, is that hundreds of millions of rock literally were pumped into his image building when he was the DA leader. So, you know, Julius Malema is popular in the sense he's extremely well-known. He's a highly recognizable figure. Now, um, Maimani is hoping to capitalize on that and, you know, get a footprint in Parliament. I guess he'll be elected. I'll be very surprised if he gets uh, 1% of the vote, maybe a bit less. But listen, you only need about 0.25% to get to Parliament. Uh, quite what these bits and pieces parties are going to do in a Parliament that doesn't even physically exist and won't for the next three years, and they'll get about, you know, three or four minutes of speaking time at the tail end of legislation is is really uh, open to question. On the other hand, even if you have one or two seats and people are looking for coalition partners and there's a government to be formed, then your tiny piece of political real estate can become very, very attractive and can be absolutely more consequential than it was. Now, I have to say that... Uh, Talking about smaller parties, I, I was about a year ago to lunch in Stellenbosch sitting next to um, one of the funders of one of these new parties and a very significant funder. And the person's, and I said, well, why are you funding? I, I, let me try and be discreet. I'm not that, well, I was once a diplomat. 
So I, I said, why are you supporting, why are you funding Party X? And this person turned around to me and said, well, you know, various things about the leader of the party and said, you know, Tony, I don't know why you asked that question because your party also once was very small and then you built it, became the official opposition, which was an accurate and flattering remark. I said, yes, that's true. But my party went right back, if you go through the end of the time, to Helen Sussman, 1959. And although it, it was small by the time I took it over because of the vagaries of the 94 election, there was like a rich hinterland to that party. It had a philosophy, it had roots, it had a, a, a liberal democrat charter, you know, consisted and there were some very fine people still in it, even though it was very reduced. So I don't think that pertains to every new party that, you know, you're a small party now and you're going to be a bigger party if you've got the right outlook and attitude. Because really South Africa, Alec, is an elephant's graveyard of political startups that start uh, shine very briefly like a comet and then disappear across the African sky. And actually, the DA, warts and all, and there are many warts, and you probably know all of them or some of them, is the only sustainable opposition project in this country. I mean, it's still the only party on the opposition side, should be doing better, of course, given the ANC's failures, that consistently in every poll gets above 20%. No other party gets anywhere near that. And I think it's not just because the DA has been around. It's because it's sustained by things that are greater than the personality of its leader or the fact that, you know, it was once a, a new boy on the block but no longer is. I love the conversation I had with Helen Ziller about the way that MPs have to go through various processes before they can get to Parliament or indeed into the provincial legislatures. And that's a, that's a completely different uh, perspective once you understand that, uh, that there's a huge organization that, that works there. But Tony, just to close off with, uh, how do you see, can you give us, as of today, things can happen in the next week, but as of today, how do you see the election panning out? Well, I, I'm of the view that the ANC will not get 50%. I think they'll get below 50, but how low they go, or how high they go in the 40s, will determine a lot of other things. And I, I'm telling you things you already know, Alec, you've written about it, you've had experts and sophologists talking about it. If they get in the high 40s, it'll be status quo ante. They will form the next government. They'll get a few smaller parties to join them, and it'll pretty much be business as usual. If they get in the low 40s or even mid 40s, it's going to be very hard for them to form a government except by calling in a bigger coalition partner and then the crossroads choices rise, which way they go, populist EFF or uh, more centrist DA, and what's going to be the response from those parts. So, yeah, it, it apps, however much that, and, and all the, the, the contingency here is the turnout of voters. Will there be a big poll or a low poll? And the bigger the poll, arguably, the better the ANC does, the lower the poll, they'll still do quite well. If it's a poll in the middle, somewhere in the low 60s, I think it'd be more difficult for the ANC to to get the vote it wants to get. And it depends on where the votes are. So if the suburbs vote in huge numbers and the townships vote in fewer numbers, the outside of KwaZulu-Natal, I think the ANC will have a bad election. If the converse happens, they'll do much better. And then, of course, there's KwaZulu-Natal. That's a wild card because everything I've said on the national picture does not apply there. Because Zuma, you know, is 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 pulling a lot of voters in that particular province, which is going to determine national outcomes. And even if the ANC coasts to back to government nationally, it's not going to have the provincial uh, governments it had before. And I think if the ANC does indifferently or poorly, it will be in a state of shock. Because quite clearly, and I don't think this is just election bluster. The ANC High Command genuinely believes that they are going to get 50%. And all this is just media chit-chat and uh, speculation. So even if they, if, they, if, if, if they do, by the standards we're talking about, okay, and they get in the high 40s, I think they will be very wounded. And a wounded party does not need to make rational decisions. So I think that's the outlook from where I'm sitting. But... Uh, Let's talk in 10 days' time and we'll know.
Fascinating as always, Tony Leon. Thank you for your time. Tony is a, a former leader of the official opposition in South Africa and, uh, well, gives lots of information to many important people around the world who want to know what's happening in this country. And I'm Alec Hogg from biznews.com. Thanks so much, Alec.